to Jesse. How are you today? All is well. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Yes. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Same here. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I kind of just wanted to um, weigh in a little bit on um, the conversation you had earlier. There was just a lot that um, you definitely uh, discussed. So I kind of wanted to impact that a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So um, the first thing that you mentioned, you basically stated that you do not believe that racism exists in America. Can you please um, elaborate as to why you don't believe that? Um, racism is a made up word by the race hustlers. And they made it up because they wanted to divide and conquer. And they wanted black people to follow them. And so they hypnotized the blacks. And the blacks was in a fallen state already. So they hypnotized them and they used that word in order to gain power and wealth from the blacks. And they wanted white people to have fear because the last thing a white person wants to be seen or known as is a racist, which doesn't exist. And so they made that word up in order to control the whites and take their uh, jobs away from them, their businesses and all that, because blacks are not capable of doing it themselves. And so they use that word in order to get free stuff. In reality, I will, it's, a, it's either right or wrong, good or evil, and all people who have not been born again of God are evil. And those who have been born of God, the spirit of God, are good. And so the warfare is going on between the spirit of good and evil, not color. Yeah, I definitely do believe in that in a spiritual standpoint because I am a Christian myself. So I definitely do believe in that. However, yes. um, it's, it's just very um, eerie to me to believe that. Come um, back to, come back to your phone and like you went away from your phone a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Can, can you hold on for one second? Let me put my earbuds back on. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, sorry. My reception is horrible. Okay. Okay. So um, I just find it very um, perplexing, actually, just to believe that um, you do not believe that racism exists in America, considering the fact that you did grow up in the South. I'm presuming that you grew up in Alabama, correct? I grew up in Alabama. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. And prior to the dumb civil rights movement, which should have never happened, there was no such word being used as racism. The blacks and the whites knew it was about right or wrong, good or evil. And the whites and the blacks who were supported good, they got along very well. And those who supported evil did not get along. Yeah. Um, so I'm, yeah. So basically, here's the thing. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just very, very confused because, have you ever experienced any particular type of racism? No, um, no not life? ever. You, you have never. No, not I, as a black man. I, who... No, never. I do. I at one time when I moved to California. I fell for the lie because I believed the so-called civil rights movement people that there was racism. So I believed that lie. And I did at one time it would say that, but I was blind and could not see. And but now, no, I've never been experienced racism. You can't experience something that doesn't exist. What do you basically um, see Jim Crow laws as? How do you, like segregation, for example, there were situations where there were black folks that were not allowed to go to certain water fountains. They were not allowed, they were denied certain different types of um, opportunities along with going to schools. I mean, if a black person were to go to a different type of school in the 60s, that was basically a life or death situation. There were situations where, excuse my language, where um, people would, where well, white people would call um, black folks the N word, and um, they, you know, go back to Africa, call them monkeys, and there were derogatory terms that were used against to oppress a race of people that have done nothing to um, whites apart from just being born of the color of their skin. Are you implying that that was racism? That was absolutely racism, absolutely, sir. Um, uh, you're right. The Democrats did have laws uh, under the Jim Crow. They created those laws in an attempt to control the people, which was wrong. Those were wrong laws. And, but the name calling, I mean, that still goes on today. Do you, when black people call each other the N word and monkeys and things like that, are they being racist toward other blacks? Well, here's the thing. When it, 
for me personally, I do not believe in using the N-word. Um, no, no, no. I'm asking well, you so. when blacks do, uh, use that word, are they being racist toward each other? No, and here's why. So the reason why— When blacks not- do it to white people, because there are black people who call white people that word, uh, especially if they're supposed to be friends, are they being racist toward whites when they use that word on whites? So it's not a matter of a racist term. So the reason why they're using the N word is the the reason why being is because it's basically their way of taking back the power that was instilled in them that they did not have the ability of having that power. Um, when the what N-word type of power taken- do they get from using? It? But first, I want to know when black people call each other racist or black people call white people racist. It, are they racist? In what situation have that ever happened? No, I'm asking you, when that happens, are they racist? In terms of if they're black, I'm just not understanding. When black either. people call white people the N-word, or when black people call each other the N-word, are they racist? No, sir. And um, Did you say no? Me. Did you say no? Yes, I said no. So are you saying that that it's only racist when white people call blacks that? um, It's racist when white people do call blacks that. So are you saying that it's only racist when white people call black people that word? It has a separate connotative meaning. No, no, no. I'm asking you. Are you saying I'm, I'm that— sorry, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to answer your question, but you keep cutting me off. Are you saying up. that it's only racist when, black, when white people call black people that? It is racist. And the is it only is racist when the white people use it toward blacks? Is that the only time that it's racist? It is racist when whites use it. Or is any that other the only that time? Is that the only time it's racist when white people use it? I'm trying to get my point across. So I know I'm asking you a question first. Are you saying that it's only racist when white people use the word to what blacks? It is, along with other races that are not part of that particular black um, black community. Yes. So you're saying yes, it's only racist when white people use it. It is, sir. Are you black? I just told you I am, sir. Oh, you told me you are? Amazing! How did you become so blind? How did I become so blind? Yeah, how did you become so blind that you can't see? What happened to you? I don't understand what you're referring to. What happened to you that you can't see? What caused you to go blind? I'm not blind. You are blind. You see, in the, you think racism. Do you go? Have you gone to college, or do you go to college? I have a college degree, yes, sir. I rest my case. That's what happened. I went to college, and that's what made me blind. Did yes. Did you go to college, sir? Yes. Don't you have a university degree, sir? Do, do, do I have one? Yes, sir. No, I can see. So I don't have one, but all the people who go to college are blind and can't see. Especially the black ones, but not only. I do sense a lot of self-hatred um, towards black people because you yourself are a black man. But Why do you hate yourself? Hate- Why do you hate? You say you have self-hatred. Why do you have that? No, I'm, I'm referring to you, sir. But I'm seeing, I'm sensing a bit of self-hatred um, towards, the, uh, you know, um, that you're experiencing. Because when you speak about other black people, you speak on them in a very um, disparaging way. What do you mean? What do um, I say about them that's not true? I mean, it's not a matter if it's not true, but well, is it well, true yeah, but what I say? Very, is it true? Have I said anything that's not true? The fact that all black people are basically destroying America. The fact that all black now you lying. I never said all black America. people. I never said all black people. Now you lying. I'm not lying. Sir. I never I said all black people. Watch your, I definitely do watch your show, sir. I know, but I never said all black people. I always say, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most. The most, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never said all. Oh. Why did you say I said all? Oh. How come black people can't be honest? The way you're talking about black people, like the, just that sentence right there, it's basically like you're creating a barrier, dividing yourself from black 
spoke, which is very interesting to me. What do you mean by that? Basically, just by that sentence itself. What sentence? You basically said, why can't black folks um, stop lying? Right. Right. And your answer is what? Why can't they stop lying? The blacks. The blacks. Yeah, like that that just that just that sentence itself, basically. What's wrong with that sentence? Um, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that basically when you're referring to just the blacks, it's basically like you're separating yourself from the fact that you are of African American ancestry yourself. I am not of that. that. I am not of that. Never have been and never will be. What do you identify yourself as racially, sir? Uh, an American who is so you black. Don't, you don't I okay, so you don't so you identify yourself as black American, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not from right. Africa. I don't have an Afro. I have an Amerifro. There are no African <laughs> There are no African <laughs> drums beating in my chest. The American guitar is playing in my heart. Black uh-huh. as the ace of space, but one hundred and born on a, and raised on a plantation, under the Jim Crow <laughs> laws, but one hundred percent American. Ain't no, I don't have Afro. Do you have an Afro? Um, I do have an Afro, but that has nothing oh, to do with it. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh why? Why? I rest my case. And there wasn't a case that was ever made, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Your oh Afro goodness. says it all. I was actually messing with you. I actually have a buzz cut, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse, I'm told. So I'm um, going, moving along, too. You also mentioned I hear that. that. That's also... even worse. That's worse than a... Afro. Um, what's evil? No, it's worse than the Afro, I'm told. A, bu- a buzz fro? A buzz cut? Yeah. I hear that that's worse than an Afro. I mean, it's straight up just shaving your head. <laughs> You're basically just, it's just basically just, just um, you know, shaving your head. <laughs> you, you have a bald head? I do, actually. Um, make a long story short, um, my hair was actually damaged over time, so I basically had to um, naturally grow it out. Oh, okay. You go to grow it back. It, oh, I see. You won't have the ball hair forever, right? No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> and you would never wear an afro, right? I would, absolutely. Why? That's my natural hairstyle. That's not my natural hair. My natural but that doesn't hair look right. Oh, uh, afros don't look right on women. It makes them look hard and and unloved. I believe that's a personal choice, uh, Mr. Peterson. But no, honestly, but I no. Look at the I women. Look at the black women with those nappy heads. They look unloved. Actually, they look unloved, and they look hard. I actually believe they look beautiful, and the fact that they're actually wearing a crown on their hair is just symbolizing their um their heritage what do you mean a crown i've never seen one with a crown i just saw nappy hair oh my goodness i'm i'm referring to our fro our fro basically symbolizes our crown that's on our hair and that is my 4c hair that grows myself that is created from god but that's that's awful it look awful that's that's (laughs) (laughs) it look all dry and hard and what happens if your husband run his finger through your hair? It's going to cut his fingers off. I mean, I maintain my hair um, every single day, so I don't think that he would have any problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I really, in all honesty and seriousness, I think you people should not be wearing that hair. It looks awful. And everybody know that it's awful. They, when they see you guys, they thought, wow, that's awful. Even the black people with the black hair know it's awful. It's just that they hate white people, and they're trying to separate themselves from the whites. It's quite unfortunate that you think that, because for years, we've always been looking at the ideology of beauty. When we look at European beauty, that's what we've always been idolized. And it just came to a point where we had to strip away from our afros, from our natural braids, to aspire to that particular type of beauty. Black people are a mess. That's that's not a mess. 
<laughs> I mean, sir, doesn't doesn't your mother have that type of hairstyle? No, she doesn't. <laughs> My mother would never wear a fro. But I'm sure that she has um four um type four C hair. She had never and would never wear a fro. <laughs> My mother never would wear a wig or fro. No? She wore her real so, hair. So how does she wear her real hair? Is it like perming or? She would straighten it out with a straight hot comb. And, That's unnatural. And she would look beautiful like that. But those Afro women, ain't no beauty in that. And a woman is supposed to look beautiful hair with long hair. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if you're trolling or you truly do believe in this. I honestly believe that. I, I would never marry a nappy-headed woman. Nappy-headed woman. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's basically how you basically see black women. If they have their hair natural like that, it's considered nappy -headed. I don't see all black women like that. Black women who don't have the afro look pretty. Those who have the fro look horrible. Look like they're half-dressed. And honestly, it's like they put on their that, clothes that morning and forgot to comb their hair. When you say that, you know, it's just bringing me back to my point that I mentioned earlier about how it seems like you have some type of self hatred regarding your own race when you're basically making statements like that. My, when you're denouncing, when you're denouncing four C textured hair, I'm trying to help. It, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, by telling people that they need to um, destroy their hair texture by using harsh chemicals? By telling them, what, no, I'm not telling them to use harsh chemicals. I'm telling them, don't wear the froze. That don't look right. But when you're not wearing the froze, what happens is that it kind of leads you down to either wearing a wig, either having to texturize your hair, which has several chemicals. that You can use a hot comb. A hot comb can also damage your hair over time. I've used those types of treatments, which is a result to why I have to shave my head over time. I know, but that afro is going to damage it even worse because you're not going to get a man with a fro. You'd be surprised, actually, because um, nobody's been complaining yet. Right, because <laughs> if you have all they get from you is sex, though. They don't want you. They just want your sex. I mean, what does sex and um, my afro correlate to? How does that correlate with each other? <laughs> right. They can see that you have this nappy hair, but they want sex from you. And they don't care because they would never marry you or anything. They just want the sex. They don't, and so you're not going to see them um, marrying you and having children with you. But they will have sex with you and go home. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Because regardless, let's say, for example, um, I have um, a child with a white man or even with a black man. Regardless of who I'm sleeping with and I have a baby with, at the end of the day, that child is still going to have my texturized hair or some level of that. But what does that have to do with him marrying you? No one's going to marry you with nappy hair. I, I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> have you, I, I if you notice, you I haven't met that. a man yet would marry you because of your nappy hair. I honestly feel like there are other reasons why. But, yeah, I know um, why. I know the enough. other reason. I know the other reason. And the other reason that oh you have. Oh, my gosh. The other reason is that you have a degree, and no man in his right mind would marry a woman with a degree because he knows that she would not be a good wife and a good mother. <laughs> this is hilarious. So you think because I have a university degree that I wear my hair natural, that I don't use any different types of texturized um, in my hair, that automatically means nobody is willing to marry me. That is hilarious. They're, they're not going to marry you, you so because you have nappy hair, and they're not going to marry you because you have a degree. And women with <laughs> educated women don't make good wives and good mothers. This is hilarious. Oh, my goodness. This is hilarious. <laughs> You got you got bars, man. I gotta tell you, like you're you're a savage. <laughs> you say I have balls? No, I said you got bars. Oh, what does that mean? Savage. Oh, bar. It's, it's like it's like like you know you you, you know you, you you got you got insults. <laughs> oh. You're funny. You're you're a funny guy. I have you ever lies. have you noticed that Big Mama don't wear an afro? Big Mama, the movie with uh, Martin Lawrence. No, Big Mama Michelle. Obama. Michelle Obama. You notice she doesn't wear an afro? I mean, that's at the end of the day, her decision and her choice. But again, going back. Have you um, noticed that she doesn't wear an afro? I just said, yes, I did notice I'll that. I rest my case. I rest my case.
that's one black woman. You know, we, you can say you that again. Black women are in this country, in this planet. That's just one black woman. But she's supposed <laughs> to be all into her blackness. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but she can always be with her blackness and not, you know, having to. Is she um, trying to be white? Is she trying to be white by not wearing an afro? I don't believe so. Honestly, I feel like at the end of the day, any black woman can do whatever they want with their hair. There's nothing wrong no, with that. No, don't I'm, wear a nappy. But, you know, I also don't think that there's anything wrong with us embracing our natural hair. It, it doesn't look right. Diana, call me again, all right? I appreciate your call. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a very interesting debate. It was amazing. Thank you. It really, really was. Thank uh, you so much, sir. Uh, all right. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show for us. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.